We can run to you, Father, just as we are, right here, right now. We run to you. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation.
It's your love that we stand upon. That is our true love, the foundation. This world was built upon your love. It's sustained by your love. You rescued it by your love, Lord. And so we rest in that this morning. That's why we sing. That's why we come here this morning is because of the hope we have in your love and in who you are. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, let's go. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Thanks for worship. Amen. Can we give that worship team a round of applause, please? Um, just got chills. And I want to do jumping jacks and I want to like dance around, but you guys don't want to see that. I don't think. Maybe? No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, gosh, we got to stay focused here. So announcements for today. My name is Jordan, too, by the way. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Church. Uh, we are excited that you're here with us. And if you are here for the first time, um, I want to let you know about our connection card. It's really our easiest way to get a hold of you, to essentially connect with you, right? And it's in a seat back pocket in front of you. So if you want to grab that right now and go ahead and start filling that out, uh, even if you've been here for a long time, you've heard us say this every single Sunday, that connection card, again, is the easiest way to get a hold of any of our, our staff members. So uh, grab that, fill it out in its entirety. If you're new, you can drop it off at our welcome center um, outside. And uh, again, if you're not new, go ahead and... Um, Fill that out if you have any questions, any prayer requests, anything going on that you want us to be able to be a part of. That's how we use that connection card. All right. And so, um, excuse me, am I echoing a little bit? And then we got life groups that are currently rolling right now. So if you don't know what a life group is, I want to give you a quick snapshot of, of the life group that I'm a part of and why we view it as so important to us, our walk, and what we do here really at Christ Church. So life groups are, are through the week. Um, we are our meetings that we uh, for my life group we meet at, at Golden Eagle Park and it's awesome for us because we get to let our kids run around and, and pretty much everybody in our life group has kids as well too and so they get to have fun on the park and, and do all that good stuff while we get to break down the sermons from the past Sunday and uh, pray for one another and just be there for one another be the church outside of just Sunday because we don't believe uh, that 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 our, our walk with Christ is just a Sunday thing, right? So we want to be able to connect with one another, be in community with one another, and that's what life groups are all about. So if you're looking for that type of thing, um, let us know. And again, you can just write that down on the connection card, or you can grab one of the pastors after the, work, after the service. We'd love to chat with you or um, email us as well. You can find any of that info on Christchurch.online. Uh, and then a couple of, of events that are coming up here. Our worship night is coming up this Wednesday, all right? And so anybody and everybody is invited to that. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, obviously this is a time for all of us to come together and worship and, and, and glorify God for all he's done in our lives. And, and we have a theme to it as well this Wednesday. But uh, this is for anybody that you're like, hey, I, this friend of mine who uh, loves to worship might not go to Christ Church. It doesn't matter. That's, are, are we on a different team with anybody that's a, a Christ follower, right? So we want people to be here worshiping God together and, and really be in his presence because um, there's a lot of people I know in this crowd here right now that um, are got, you're a prayer warrior and you're you're seeking out God's best for this community of Fountain Hills and for the communities and the spheres of influences that you have man let's come together and worship and and, and bring that out does that make sense uh, so worship night coming up this Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. child care will be available as well too so if you have little ones you can bring them in um, we love doing that, too, with our oldest. Um, she can actually hang with it a little bit, but our, our, our younger two can't. And so that child care is an uh, amazing opportunity if you want to drop your kid off. Um, and that's going to be birth through first grade, I believe. Don't quote me on that. We'll have more <laughs> details. We'll send something out. Um, and then our Vet Connect ministry. All right, that is today. Uh, it's our, our Vet Connect. It's in Classroom 101. It's a time to come together to, uh, if you are a veteran, um, to just be in community with one another, support one another. If you want to support veterans to be able to be in community, and again, that takes place right after the service here today, um, te technically 11 a.m., but right after, go ahead and make your way down there uh, for Vet Connect in Classroom 101. It's in our lower building, and you'll see the 101 on the door. And then lastly, our Super Bowl party here today. Um, it's typically done by our youth team, um, but everybody's welcome. And uh, I know people a lot of times do stuff at home, and that's totally fine. But come on, come check it out here. Uh, this is, I don't know, you might have a bigger screen at your house. If you do, 
My goodness. All right, so um, we're actually going to your place if you do have a bigger screen, and uh, we'll have a blast. Uh, we, we clean up really well, I promise. No, so come here. It, it's going to start at 4 p.m. The game starts at 4.30. If you want to just come hang out, we're going to have some food uh, and have the, the game playing and, and do some, some fun stuff. So anyways, uh, again, geared not necessarily geared towards youth. It's put on by our youth team, uh, but everybody is welcome to come by and hang out with us. Um, and I kind of lied. Last thing, I want to uh, just welcome our online community that's tuning in through Facebook Live and then also let you guys know here one of the, the most interactive ways we try and be is through our YouVersion app, um, and, and it's our uh, way to take notes on the sermon. So if you don't have notes or the ability to take notes on your phone or whatever it is, you can do so through the YouVersion app. Um, it's, it's just the Bible app, too, if you search that, too. It's the most popular Bible app out there. And if you type or you click the More button on the bottom right of the YouVersion app, this is important, the More button on the bottom right, and then click Events, you can actually see Christ Church of Fountain Hills will pop up first. And then you can take notes, you can follow along with all the notes that pop up on the screen. Uh, it's a great interactive way to stay in tune uh, with the message. And that's for everybody at home as well, too. Um, and on that note as well, our CCFH app that we would also direct you to is under maintenance. Next week, we're going to have a new and improved app coming out for you guys to download. So more on that later. But long story short, uh, I love you guys. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's get ready for an awesome message. I said, bump it, guys. Let's do it. Oh, good morning. How you doing? You know, I've already, I've already seen you once. You know, you've seen a lot of me. But, uh, man, I am honored because I get to start a brand new series this morning called Targeting Truth. And as you saw, that quote from Pontius Pilate comes out of John 18. We got a really interesting conversation between two different kings, right? A king from the heavenly kingdom. And a king who's representing Caesar, the king over the Rome, Roman world. And they have a political conversation and, and, a, and a defining of terms. And the question at the end of this conversation, Pilate said, now, come on, tell me, are you the king of the Jews? Just, just tell me. And Jesus said, you say that I am. And the way he answered that, if you look in the original language, Jesus is basically saying, well, yes and no. Yes, I am according to my definition, but no, I'm not according to your definition. And then Jesus said, I've come to be a witness to the truth. And then Pilate said, what is truth? And friends, he walked away and went to the crowd. He walked away from Jesus. <laughs> he walked away from the truth. And what we're not going to do in this series, we are not turning away from the question. We're not going to avoid it. We're targeting it. We're getting in the game. Anybody ready to get in the game this morning, right? Come on, it's game day for us, right? We're doing it. So what do we need to do to build a solid foundation on biblical truth? I was really, you know, in the last couple of weeks just praying, like, man, what, what's, a, what's a really good Bible story or a, a passage that we can use to really break this down? And my mind went to the story of Zacchaeus. Anybody remember the story of Zacchaeus, short guy in the tree? Heard it all my life, right? And I'm telling you, this came alive for me. I found myself in this story in the last couple weeks. So if you have your Bible, Luke 19, we're going to look at the first 10 verses. And the story of Zacchaeus really helps us answer this question, how do we lay a foundation of biblical truth in our lives? So if you got it, let's read Luke 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree.
to see him since Jesus was born in that well. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. Oh, yeah, yeah, mutter, 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 mutter. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, it's so good. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that we are a church. We're a body of believers, a part of a greater body. But I particularly thank you for this church that we are willing to face this question of what is truth. We're targeting truth because we want a firm foundation to stand upon in a world that desperately needs to hear and see your truth lived out by your church. So, Lord, help us this morning to break this down. Let our hearts be open to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So this series, we're starting on personal truth. And it's an area up for grabs and opinion in our society for sure. But what do you think... What was Zacchaeus' personal truth before the tree? He had a foot in Judaism and a foot in the Roman world, right? He had a foot in both sides. And he, then he was taking advantage of people for his own gain and, and his selfishness, right? So he was, he was defining his own truth. You could say, you know, he was the, the gatekeeper of his own destiny, right? He was like, man, this is my life. I'm living it. I'll take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, all for my gain. He had his truth figured out, right? This, this was his definition. How was that working out for him? Well, people saw him as a sinner. He had no respect. And really, when you think about it, he was, obviously he was unsatisfied or he wouldn't even been interested in Jesus, right? If you got it all figured out, hey, I've got my life. I, I don't need any of that. I don't need something different or extra. But, but he was interested enough to run ahead and climb a tree, right? And he probably didn't mind being in that tree because he knew being down there, he'd probably get beat up. You know, he's like, I'm good up here. But he made the effort. You know, he, he was, was very interested. And just like we read, everything changed for him that day. And it was all because of Jesus, right? It was all because of Jesus. So what is Zacchaeus? have to do to rebuild his life? How was his life rebuilt on a new foundation of truth? What did he do? Number one, he had to look at Jesus. He had to look at Jesus. Verse 3 and 4 of Luke 19 said he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd, so he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. So he knew Jesus was coming this way. He'd been hearing about Jesus, but he had to go see him for himself to see if what he was hearing was true. Do you believe in, in what you know about Jesus? Is it, is it based on what someone else has told you, or are you looking at him yourself? That's the first question. I, I just want to want to pose this morning because the world would say Jesus is a certain way, and, you know, our, our Mormon LDS friends, they have a Jesus that they have filtered through someone in the 1800s that had a vision about him, so that rewrote, this is who Jesus is like and what he's about. They have the name Jesus Christ on their building, but, but it's not the real Jesus. It, it's not the Jesus who split time in half, right? B.C. A.D., the one who invaded the world, invaded history with his grace and truth. That's who we're talking about. And, and Jesus Christ is and was the most important person in human history than anybody else. And, and there's really, there's more evidence for that than the other side. It would take more effort to disprove that point than to prove it. I love this. St. Saint, Saint Thomas Aquinas said this in the 13th century. If Jesus did not happen then an even more unbelievable miracle happened. 
the conversion of one half of the Roman world and their moral transformation into unselfishness and new heights of holiness all by the biggest lie in history? You'd have to believe something bigger if you didn't believe that Jesus came and made a difference. He's the thread that, that ties the entire story of the Bible together, and he's what ties our entire human history together, friends. If you look at a timetable, you write it out on a whiteboard, and you separate B.C. from A.D., you look, the cross is what separates the timeline. He came and invaded history for you and me. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd, huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance, endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by, here it is, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. Man, I love that title. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. The writer of Hebrews is talking about a real person who came in our real human history, friends. See, if truth is just a philosophy or an idea or a moral, moral concept, then, then it's, it's up for grabs and open for opinion, right? It's like a nice salad bar, right? You step up, yeah, I, I have a little bit of Buddhism, I have a little bit of this and that, maybe sprinkle a little of Jesus on top, you know, it's my salad. You've seen the, the coexist stickers on the back of the cars, make everybody feel warm and fuzzy, oh man, a little bit of this and that, right? It, you know, kind of sounds good, like, oh man, that's nice, yeah, be nice to everybody and just accept everything and just take what you want. But if truth is a person, that changes everything. Because I have to wrestle and grapple with that person. I got to find out if that person is true or not, right? This changes everything. And friends, there's a man who existed in the first century who claimed to be the way and the truth and the life. And if he was a real man in history, which even most atheists will admit to that, then we have to look at him and ask, why would he say that? Why would he say that? And that leads us to our next point. Zacchaeus also had to listen to Jesus. So he had to look at Jesus, and then he had to listen to Jesus. Verse 5 of Luke 19, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. See, Zacchaeus' heart was open to listening to Jesus because he was listening to the heart of Jesus, right? Everybody else wanted to be away from Zacchaeus, but here is someone who is saying, I want to be close to you, Zacchaeus. So he was listening to his heart, not just his words. Hebrews 3.15 Remember what it says, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. He didn't harden his heart. His heart was open to what Jesus was saying. Mark 9, verse 7. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Here's the father speaking about Jesus with a heart of love. I love my son. I'm sending him in love, right? He came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And when you really listen to somebody, you, you, you're listening to their heart and, and you make a connection, right? There, there's, a, there's a response that has a connection, right? Jordan came to me and was like, man, I've had a rough week, man. This is what happened. I heard about a friend of mine that this happened to him. And, you know, and I hear he's got a heavy heart, right? But if I don't listen to that, the heart behind that is, all right, cool, bro. See you, man. We'll see you next week, man. Take it easy. You know, and I walk away from that conversation. I listened to his words, but I didn't listen to his heart, right? As a friend, I would stop and say, oh, man, dude, tell me about it, man. I'm sorry. Man, let, 
let's pray about it. What's, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I, when I feel his heart and I'm listening to more than just words, I'm going to respond to that. And, and Jesus says it like this. Here's how Jesus says it in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. We got a lot of scripture this morning. Is that okay with you guys? <laughs> I'm just kind of, we're running. Uh, game time. Here we go. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it, right? He's saying it when someone actually takes to heart what I'm saying, right? It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. So the only reason that I wouldn't do what Jesus says is because I wasn't listening to the heart behind what he's saying, right? Because even in this passage, right, the reason for the obedience, listening and obeying, is because he wants me to have a foundation. Hey, I want what's best for you. I love you. Listen to me. Jesus is like, it doesn't make sense to listen to my words and not do what I say because can't you hear my heart? Listen to my heart. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And we know Zacchaeus really listened because he chose to take the next step and experience Jesus. Point number three, experience Jesus. Look at verse 5 and 6. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. This was a happy dude, all right? Gladly. Imagine a little short guy coming down a tree and then him leading, leading the, the, the procession to his house. You know, you could see him, man, a little short guy. And, and, of course, everybody, mutter, 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 mutter. I can't believe that, you know. And he's just, mm, he's walking, man. This guy is glad. He is happy. He is choosing to experience Jesus, right? He looked at him. He listened to him. And now he's experiencing Jesus. But here's what's interesting. Man, and I'm telling you, these things come out. And I've heard this story so many times. But notice, Jesus didn't ask him, he told him. This was a command, not a request. It went, hey, bro, you got a little something to eat? You mind if I come? No. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. I must go to your house today. Which tells us that experiencing Jesus is a requirement for real transformation. You got to let him in your house. You got to let him in. And what was in Zacchaeus' house? Hmm. He was a rich man, had a lot of elaborate things that he got from all of his wickedness. And and you know what? Jesus saw it all. He was sitting at a fancy table around a bunch of fancy things, looking right at his idolatry and sinfulness. Ouch. It's painful. Right? Experiencing Jesus, certainly when, when you're, for the first time, when you're acknowledging that you are a sinner and you need a Savior, it's painful. But, but do you see what Zacchaeus' house really represents, friends? It represents his heart. It represents our hearts. But when we put our, ourselves into the story, and we realize that we have to let Jesus see all the junk in our hearts, that's when the true change can happen, right? Experiencing Jesus. And the most powerful thing, I think, is that Jesus actually wanted to be in his house. He wanted to be welcomed into his brokenness and his wickedness, right? You can see God's love pursuing Zacchaeus. And, you know, when you live in your own truth and you're trying to play God and you're running from grace, it's a a running away, right? But when you start searching for truth and you turn to Jesus, you're allowing his grace to run into you. 
Because that's what grace is. Running after us. God's love is in motion, moving after you and me, right? On a trajectory. I always mess that word up. Keith, be proud of me, you know. <laughs> love you, Keith. Keith is watching. It's running after you. And you know what? Hey, we're, we're talking about targeting truth this series, but the honest, beautiful thing about it is that truth is actually targeting us. Mm, mm -mm. So many people searching for truth, and if you stop and just turn and look at Jesus, let it hit you. Because truth is targeting you and me, God seeking us out. And that's exactly what Jesus said in response to Zacchaeus. Verse 10, I've come to seek and save the lost. I've come to seek you out, Zacchaeus, and to save you, to rescue you today. Here's the verse that puts the exclamation point on it, Romans 5, 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Do you hear the pursuit of God's love in that, friends? And that is so good. But so many people don't really get to the good stuff because they don't get past the first two points, right? They may look and listen a little bit, but when it comes to experiencing Jesus, oh, no, 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 that, that's way too intimate, way too exposing, way too painful, right? But that's what makes Jesus different than the other teachers of all the other religions in the world. And here it is. Jesus requires conversion over compliance. Conversion over compliance. And let me break this down. All the other religions of the world say be compliant, right? Do these right things so that maybe God or the gods will be pleased with you. Maybe you'll go to heaven. Maybe you'll have inner peace, right? They're working from the outside in. Does that make sense? Woo. But I'm telling you. Jesus came so we could be converted and transformed from the inside out so that the outflow can be compliance and holiness, right? I want to do what's right. I want to be compliant to God's word and live that life, but it has to come from the inside out, and that is what makes Jesus different because he came to rescue us from our real enemy, that sin that so easily entangles us, which we read about in Hebrews earlier. And will eventually kill us. He gave up his life so you and me could have life. And so we wouldn't have to die in our sin. Friends, what other religion could say that? God who suffered? God who's pursuing us? And I, I, I'm so convinced of this more than ever. I mean, that's why Jesus can't be, be put into the category of just a good teacher. Right, a lot of people want to say, yeah, he was a good teacher. But you know what? That single solitary by itself category is not even on the table with Jesus. You can't say that by itself. I'm sorry. And if you think that's all he was, you haven't really looked or listened to the real Jesus. I mean, we're talking about a guy who his, his very first sermon in Luke chapter 4, remember he stood up in his hometown, in his home synagogue with his home peeps, you know, he's hanging out, and he's, he stood up, and he read Isaiah 61, and he said, this has been fulfilled in your presence today. He kind of drops a bomb on them, and they, wow. And then they're like, wait a minute. Isn't this Joseph's boy? Oh, we know him. And then Jesus cuts to the heart, and he starts talking about their racism and their hatred. And these people take him to go throw him off the cliff to kill him. You don't do that to a good teacher. Much less your buddy you grew up with, right? This guy was different. Jesus was offensive. He was. His words and his life, the life that he lived, cut to the heart. And you know why? Because that's what he wants. He wants our hearts. So he cuts into our hearts because that's what he wants. We're talking about personal truth this morning. So we got to let him get up close and personal. If you want a personal truth and foundation based upon Jesus and this redemptive story, you got to let him get up close and personal. 
I just want to take a couple of minutes and, and, and break down this idea of conversion versus compliance. I made a couple of lists, uh, and they're going to be up on the screen here. Uh, we're going to reveal them one by one. This may feel like family feud. Is it hairspray? <clears throat> you know, it'd be, it's kind of a little bit like that, but just hang with me now, all right? Hang, hang with me here because I think it's important because we're asking, who, who is Jesus to me, right, personally? Who do I say Jesus is? So let me ask you this first. Is he your master, right? This would go under conversion. Or he is, is he just your mentor? He's just somebody I, I look to, right, and I respect, right? I, he's someone I, I adore. I look up to him, and I, oh, yeah, I want to be like him, right? Is he your master or is he just a mentor? Is he your substitute or is he just a standard? He's a good, that's a good, solid standard to live by. I tell you what, that Jesus, yeah. Is he your substitute? Do you know that he took your place, that he paid the price? He took God's judgment upon himself so we wouldn't have to face it. That's what our Savior did. He's so much more than just a standard, friends. Is he your Savior? Or is he a sidekick? Yeah. He's just my sidekick, like Robin. I'm Batman. I'm my savior. I'm ruling the, the, the show here when I need him. Come on in here, Robin. Help me out. Ooh, it's looking tough. I better call Robin. Better call my sidekick. Jesus, I need you. Mm. I'll tell you, man, God, right here to me all week, man. I'm like, wow. Okay. Truth. Is he your truth? Or is he just a good teacher? We said before. I tell you what, that Jesus was a top five teacher. Man, that guy, he said some good, I, I'd put him right up there with the best. <laughs> really, that's what people do, right? You just want to make him a good, yeah, I'll take bits of this and that, you know. But they're not willing to say, no, no, he, he's the truth, right? There's probably atheists that would say, yeah, he was a good teacher. I like what he said there. You know, he loving people, this and that. But to say he's the way, the truth, and life, now wait a minute. That's getting a little too personal, man. Now you're stepping on my truth, right? So is he your everything or is he just an extra thing? Like that salad bar. I'm just going to throw a little extra Jesus on the side, right? Is he your heartbeat or is he just your homeboy? You see the T-shirt, Jesus is my homeboy? I'm like, bro, he better be more than that to you, man. Because a homeboy can't take care, take care of your real problem, which is your sin, right? Your real enemy. You need somebody big. You need a convert, somebody that falls under this category right here, man. You need something real. You need some life change. And, you know, transformation, conversion, it doesn't look the same. The end result is the same, but it doesn't, that journey, that process isn't the same for everybody. Because you don't have to be like Zacchaeus. Right, who absolutely, you know, he ruined his repu reputation, years of collecting junk in his heart, right? We all need Jesus no matter what age we are or what we've experienced in life. And, and man, I hope I have four teenagers at home, five kids total, what, you know, 11 to 18. And I look at my kids and I pray for my kids and I'm talking to every young person in this room that I hope this encourages you. That you don't have to live like Zacchaeus. You don't have to try things. You don't have to go out there and say, well, let me get a build a testimony. Or let me do this and that. Let me try this and see if I like it or not. No. If you know and understand your sinfulness, you know, I heard somebody say, you know, sometimes we hit bottom, right? Many of us have We've been a very low point. But sometimes the bottom comes up and hits us, right? You can see somebody and be like, ooh, that could be me. I don't want to go. Let, let it hit you. And realize I'm just one decision and one moment away, right, from throwing so much of my life away. I don't have to do that if I know that I need Jesus, right? And I understand that and I reach out to him and, and say, I, I, I see what you did for me, Jesus. I need a conversion. I need a life change. I need you to take my sinful heart that we're all born with. God, take it and become my savior. That's why he came was for every single one of us to save us, rescue us, and change us so we can give him our entire life, right? 
Friends, it's time to experience Jesus and get in the game. This is what it's about. This is the good stuff. And that's exactly what Zacchaeus did. And we know he got in the game because he immediately began to do this. Point number four, follow Jesus. Look at verse 8 and 9 of Luke 19. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. Here's a man who lived his life taking from others and now is standing up and saying, from this day forward, Lord, my life is about giving. I want to be like you. I found my purpose. I found my identity in you. And you notice that he has called him Lord. He called him Lord. Because sitting at his table, Surrounded by all the other things that he had made Lord of his life, right? All the other treasures was the greatest treasure he'd ever found. Forgiveness, right? Something that could change him from the inside out. A new identity, right? And he's instantly started walking in that new identity. Do you see that? He probably had some ground to cover, you know? Probably took him a while. to to get a better name in the community, right? But he started right away because he had a new foundation. He had something to stand upon. Just like that Luke 6 verse that we read earlier, why would you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I said? Here's someone saying, Lord, and doing what Jesus said because he experienced him. And now he's following him. Zacchaeus knew that this is what his heart was looking for in all those other things, right? Because every time we, we, we're, we're worshiping something else, which, you know, it's idolatry. When we run to other things in life, our heart is looking for a Savior, right? That's what our heart's looking for. And Zacchaeus knew he'd found what nothing else could do for him. And nothing else could satisfy like Jesus. Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Like you can almost tangibly hear the joy coming from Zacchaeus. Lord, today, from now on, this is what I'm going to do. Because he found it, friends. Have you found what your heart is looking for? Because everybody does have some kind of savior in their life. I mean, maybe money, maybe an unhealthy relationship, success, people pleasing, substance abuse. It can even be good things, right? Our family, a good job. We can put these things above God. You know, if, if every human heart is looking for a savior, right, and this is how we're made, obviously because we all do it, Why wouldn't you try one that's forgiving, loving, brings you peace, joy, and hope? Why wouldn't you try it? It's time we trust the one that put that longing in our hearts. He's the one. Something jumped out to me. I've never seen this story before. As we get ready to bring it to a close, Jesus said a word that has so much significance, in verse 5 and in verse 9, he says the word today. He he said, I must stay at your house today, in verse 5, and today salvation has come to this house, verse 9. Zacchaeus didn't wait to follow Jesus. He was in today mode, right? Right? In verse 8, he said, here and now I give half my possession. Are you living in today mode? Friends, it's game time. There's a a big game on today. We know about it. They're going to battle it out. Somebody's going to be the champion. There is an even greater battle for your heart today. There is an even greater battle for truth today. But we have to get in the game. It's 
real. I'm going to go back to Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3.15. Let's read this again. Remember what it says. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. It's so easy to live in yesterday mode, right? Well, you know, I, I read yesterday or I had an experience with Jesus years ago or, I, you know, I felt a tingle up and down my spine, you know, one time when I was worshiping. And, yeah, I've, I've experienced it. Yesterday, right? It's the same with tomorrow mode. We do that too. With tomorrow I'll start giving or t- tomorrow I'll get involved with the church. T- t- tomorrow I- I'll really try to experience Jesus and we put it all, we put it all. But God wants us to live in today mode. We're going to finish with communion this morning so the guys can come up and prepare for, for communion. But I want to share one final verse with you before we do that. It's from John 8. It's 31 and 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Think about that phrase, know the truth. Like to really know something, you have to experience it, right? So so the, the faithful obedience, the following Jesus, right? That's how, that's how we know the truth and walk in freedom. Like, it's an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time experience, and that's how this story comes full circle for all of us. That this could not just be a one-time experience for Zacchaeus if he wanted to continue to stand on truth. Right? It is an ongoing, continuing, I'm going to look at Jesus today. I'm going to listen to Jesus I want to experience Jesus. Let him in so I can follow Jesus. And all of it, it's a continuing. It's, it, it's ongoing. And, and friends, for us, targeting truth is targeting Jesus. That's why we're here. We got to look at him. Got to listen to him. Experience him. Because we need to follow him. This world needs to see truth lived out. When Zacchaeus focused on Jesus, his life was changed. And friends, a couple thousand years later, it's the same Jesus. Every generation, millions of people are bowing their knee to Jesus. Are they naive? Are they dumb? Are they manipulated? No. We're not. We all chose to be here today. Maybe somebody nudged you. Get in the car. Wake up, boy. You know. But for the most part, we all have the choice today to be in this room. Right? So we can focus on Jesus and we can receive the same thing that Zacchaeus received. This new identity. This new foundation. I stand on the truth. Right? You are making me new. My hope is in you. I surrender my fear because forgiveness has come in the room. He's sitting at my table. He loves me. He has sought me out. And he is my Savior. He's mine. So as we take communion this morning, I really want you to think about what it represents. We're we're holding in our hands something that symbolizes the very blood and body of the one who has sought us out. He said, come down. I'm going to be with you today. I want to walk with you through that trial. I want to be with you through this hard time. I want to be with you. Listen to my heart. Hear the heart behind Jesus as you take communion this morning. And as you take this in, even into your body, think about him coming into your heart, into your home and say, Jesus, if there's anything, that I have put above you, take the first seat at my table. You take that place, Jesus, because I have to bow to you. I want the foundation. I want my personal truth to be the truth.
because he is what our hearts are looking for, friends. Let's take communion together. guys, I don't want to interrupt anybody that's uh, praying right now, and, and feel free to continue to do so as we, uh, after we wrap up the service here today. Um, but what I want to encourage us with is, is this, to live in today mode. Um, doesn't that, that juice taste a little especially delicious here right after we get to hear the message of Jesus coming to uh, be our Savior? And, and so what I mean by live in today mode, like Michael is talking about, is, is if you want to respond to that, do it. And do it today. Uh, don't wait until tomorrow. And so maybe that looks like a couple different ways you can respond to it by just coming up and talking to uh, one of the pastors, but myself, Michael, uh, anybody on our leadership team. Or uh, if you don't know us, write it down on the connection card and we'll, we'll look at those and, and get back to you today. Or maybe it's as simple as, as reaching out to the person that nudged you to come here today. And maybe they're not even sitting in the room. Somebody uh, in your life said, hey, you need to get your butt into church to hear about Jesus and the, the work that he's done for your life. And so we just want to encourage you, be in today mode. Uh, respond to what God's calling you to do today. Um, and, and maybe it's not that uh, conversion moment. Maybe it's something different where it's, uh, God, you've laid it on my heart to get plugged in, whatever. And, and that's Obviously, that's between you and God right now, but man, be in today mode. Respond today. I love what Michael talked about, the song we got to sing. Uh, it's kind of the, the emphasis of our worship night here on Wednesday. The last thing I'll, I'll say to you guys, the emphasis of our worship night. Um, forgiveness is here. The truth is here. Let's embrace it. Let's be in today mode. We're standing on the truth, and we're moving forward in, in absolute boldness. Would you guys stand with me real quick as we pray to head out of here this morning? 
Let's bow our heads. God, we just thank you so much for sending Jesus to, uh, to be the Savior, to be the truth, the way, the truth, the life. God, we just uh, we pray that we live in today mode every single day, that we embrace that your mercies are new each morning, that we embrace that the mission that you've given us is new each morning, that we have somebody to impact, that we have something to work on in our lives to become more and more Christ-like, to become more and more like you so that we can bring the truth to other people in real and tangible ways. God, this world is broken and it's in need of a Savior. God, you've empowered us to be change agents for this world. And God, we just, we humbly come before you here today and say, God, lead us, uh, empower us, make us who you want us to be so that we can be difference makers in this community, in all of our spheres of influence and throughout the world. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. We love you guys. We'll see you later.